Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. This is a continuation of my updated in-depth guide series. We're on to Earth. Now, this is not to be confused with my recent series, the Mite updated ones. Uh, this is the, my typical one where I cover all the Mite rotations, all the precision rotations, and all the tanking rotations as well. And as normal, you'll in the pinned comment in the comment section, you'll find timestamps relevant to each section of the video. So if you're looking for just the tanking side, then you can skip right to that. As well as the YouTube slider bar, you'll be able to uh, kind of follow along and you'll be broken up into individual sections as well. So, uh, I am super speed based for the for Earth, but the only rotation that impacts super speed is the melee version with Dervish. But uh, in that section, I will cover what you can use instead of it. Uh, besides that, you'll find some iconic powers, but uh, largely Earth is going to be based on just using Earth powers alone. Uh, as well as Earth is, uh, it's it's become much better for single target and melee based. The, the range still kind of suffers. The range kind of heavily relies on heat vision, but uh, that can be said for the same for multiple power sets. So let's dive into Earth. Okay, so the DPS spec stays the same as you would expect for Might DPS. We're looking at a superpower spec, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, putting everything into Might and Power. Iconic powers, you will need Heat Vision, Knee Venom Boost, and Robot Psychic. And the running gag that I still haven't respect my skill points from my, <laughs> my feet video where I still have super strength, so don't spec that. Uh, put X over that. One of these times I'll get around to actually respecting. <laughs> Uh, super speed, I do take the power nades just because uh, Earth Jackhammer spam can be a little bit power intensive, especially with a claw troll. So uh, take these if you can afford it. If not, no big deal. But the only super speed power you require is Whirling Dervish, as per usual. But I mean, hey, you guys won the best rotation, so. And you just need one weapon, uh, one skill point in the weapon. You're not going to be using it, so don't worry about it. In terms of gear, you're looking at Blast Adapter. Head mod is going to be supercharged in Tomb. Next is going to be Escalating Might. Uh, accelerated Unstoppable. You could do Accelerated Jackhammer too, but uh, I mean, I prefer Unstoppable. Chest is going to be extended supercharge. Um, I should make a note here. If you're running Scrap the Soul Cloak at 200, then don't run Extended Supercharge. Run uh, Penetrating Strikes. Uh, I don't have a Scrap the Soul Cloak at 200 because this is the EU server, so just use your imagination that I would normally have at 200. Uh, but it, normally I wouldn't use this. I would use like something else. I'd use like Solar just for the might because I don't have it on the server. But ideally, Scrap the Soul Cloak, I know I'm jumping ahead to artifacts, but Scrap the Soul Cloak is much more important for Earth because you're using a Tomb and Unstoppable. Uh, and Tomb is one of the best superchargers in the game, especially for a 50. And Unstoppable is a clipping supercharge generator, which is also the only power like that in the game. <laughs> so, Scrap the Soul Cloak uh, is going to be, no matter what, on your melee build as Earth. But uh, if it's not a 200, if, if it's a 200, don't use this. If it's not a 200, then use this. Leg mod doesn't matter. Uh, utility belt, whatever. You could use the Summer Trinket. You could use Dark Contract Bat, uh, DPS Trinket, Orbital and Supply. Hand mod is going to be max damage. And foot mod you re will require dashing combos for running dervish. That brings us to the artifacts. It's transformation card is going to be a must. Scrap of soul cloak is going to be a must. Uh, strategist is nice. If you don't have soul cloak, you could run um, soul amplifier just for the might. That's what I do. Because it's my, if this was 160, I'd probably use it. But it's just, it's not viable whatsoever for me to use it. I'd rather uh, run soul amplifier with all that extra might. But, uh, or you could run Amulet as well, so you've got some options, but Scrap of Soul Cloak is a must. Augments, give me Mind Augments, my Origin Augments, that's going to be as expected. So, let's get into the loadout here. Okay, so taking a look at the Earth loadout for DPS Melee, nothing's really changed for a long, very long time with Earth. Um, there's been some variations on the fourth power. Some people use Phase Dodge to get back into uh, Jackhammer right away. Uh, some people use Dervish. Some people use other powers like uh, Debris Field to set up a Crush or just another Dot. 
Uh, some people used it with Fortify Golem and then taken like uh, Crystal. But since you 103, Crystal's a lot weaker in damage compared to like uh, Fury and, and Sorcery. Uh, I just I haven't found any even for single target. I really haven't found any viable rotations. Um, you can certainly do it. It's just that the biggest thing with Fortify is it just doesn't clip. It just makes it so awkward not being able to be clipped. Uh, like Unstoppable really has no business being clipped. It's a supercharged engineer. The only reason why it can clip is that Unstoppable used to be uh, the immunity before stats revamp, so it just carried over the coding. So the same thing with like Rage is Plasma Wretch. Plasma Wretch you should be able to jump cancel. Uh, or clip it. Uh, sorry, you should be able to clip it, but you can't because it was jump cancelable before. It used to be a channel before stats revamp, so that's the reason why you can't clip it because it, the game thinks it's a channel, but it's not. Unstoppable, uh, it thinks it's still immunity, but it's not. It's a supercharged generator. So I mean, that's just coding. I guess that's to be fixed, but it's been like that since stats revamp, literally for like what three years now. But uh, so before people keep saying, well, what have you used if you're not doing your sure run off super speed? That's fine. Earth has options. Uh, you can use localized tremor. The cooldown's a little, or sorry, not the cooldown, but the animation's a little awkward on localized tremor, but the damage is still really good. So you can still use that. You don't have to use Dervish. You could, I mean, if you really like Crystal, you could use it, but uh, that's definitely going to be a damage loss, having to hit Fortify Golem each time. But essentially, you're just clipping Tectonic Break with Unstoppable, which is your supercharged generator, which is why you want to run Scrap the Soul Cloak for Entomb. Because Entomb does pretty much the same damage on AoE as it does on Single Target. It's a very, very versatile supercharge. Earth in general just has the best... Earth in general probably has the best supercharges out of any power set. Um, medi even Meteor Shower is really good. It does high damage. It's just not worth it because it's at 10,000. But it's de it does high damage. Uh, Earthquake does amazing damage, but once again, it's at 10,000. If you've got a huge, if you get multiple supercharged spammers in the group, then yeah, you can use this. But um, earthquake is really good as well. It's just that entomb is much more practical. And then technically, envelop is one of the strongest tank supercharges. It's just that with so many powers that sh penetrate shields, it just it's points to use envelop. But uh, it used to be. It's technically on paper, it's really good. And then you can basically get robot psychic running it out. So whirling dervish. I'll show you with the dashing combos. So if you're using whirling dervish. You know, technically weapon tamp ca cancel of it, but like I said before, you're losing damage. If you're using dashing combos, you basically lunge forward and do a melee AoE hit. That can crit as well, so basically bonus damage. And that'll be the sense of the loadout. So like I said before, there's options if you don't want to use Dervish. Uh, I personally wouldn't use Crystal in this kind of situation, but you can if you want. So let's show you the rotation. You get the gist of it there. It's another really awkward rotation to parse uh, on on these three targets. Um, definitely, the, the issue is that when you're doing it yourself on those three targets and kind of mush them together, the dashing combos is really only going to hit two targets because of how like awkwardly spread out they are. Where in a group, uh, you've got much better positioning around the tank. You can move around. These ones you can't because of the stupid dom. Because I have like 5,000 dom because i got the OP head and neck. 
So there's some damage being missed here because I don't have, I'm not hitting all three targets with dashing combos. But like I said, it's going to be hovering around just under a million, 93, 97, 96, 93, a million there. And even the million was 39.2 percent. It just had 40 hits, so an extra a couple hits versus these ones, so an extra six hits. So that's going to be t uh, ticks of dervish, stuff like that. So the as you saw with the combo, really, you're doing the same thing, Jack Hammer, over and over again. And then when the combo gets to about 9 o'clock, that's when you start dervish and then clip it into... Um, tectonic break so that's that's really all you're doing there is just uh clipping dervish about nine o'clock so you have that so even worst case scenario if you do get knocked down from dervish if a nap blocks or something like that then you clip right back into tectonic break and unstoppable so it uh doesn't really become an issue at all and you saw how fast i'm, I'm gaining supercharge uh just off that rotation with unstoppable so you can always use entomb to offset any your melee damage Okay, so with Earth single target, the spec stays the exact same. In terms of loadout, we are taking Amps of a Heat Vision now, which means we have to have Solar Sapphire as an artifact. And then also, we're running uh, Granorum. Uh, so with this one, it does change slightly the build. Uh, Earth does like Granorum because we don't really have any powers to set up uh, Crush PI reliably. We do have some options. Debris Field, it's a fairly weak dot, but it is 12 seconds, applies Crush. Uh, where's the other power here? Rumble Crush is actually not too bad. It's a nice burst damage, plus it applies, I think it's a three or four tick dot. Uh, so that is viable to use. Uh, Unstoppable is what we use in melee range, but it doesn't have any kind of range outside of like 10 feet, so definitely can't be using that. And then obviously Earth and Grip is not viable to be used in, in um, where Earth and Grip go? Earth and Grip is not viable to use as a DPS, so you don't have to worry about that. So it uh, brings in, brings us to like Quantum, where we are using this artifact to apply the PI just to make our lives easier for a single target. So if you don't have this artifact, then essentially what the loadout does change is that you just run a, a PI power here. So like Debris Field, like Rumble Crush, uh, basically that's your option. If you're going to be melee range, which you really shouldn't be, you can use Unstoppable, but then there's, these powers don't clip with Unstoppable, so that's kind of pointless anyway. So ideally it'd be Rumble Crush or Debris Field. Those are your options. But alas, uh, this rotation, since it uses Grim, I'm only using Upheaval, Amplified Heat Vision, and Sandblast. I'm not even using a fourth power in this loadout. Uh, and I've got Robot Psyche for side damage. So you think that, oh, if you're not using a power, you can use Fortify Gold. No, it's, it's just one of those things where you're, it's kind of similar to like the Fire Single Target, where if you use any powers outside these three, it comes into like a damage loss. So you'll see in the rotation, but really there's no room for another, an extra power at all. It's, the, it's just the, these three powers continually have cooldown, uh, which is what I found to be the highest DPS. You can mix in Pebble, like Pebble Blast rotations are viable. The only thing is it falls into the same line as like Electricity and Sork in terms of like Vengeance Spam. Uh, so if Pebble Blast crits, it's great. If it doesn't crit, then you have a poor parse. And I mean like a pretty, like a huge difference in parsing because Pebble Blast crits for like, you know, 77k regular hits is like, you know, in the 20s. So you're missing 50k damage off one power. And if you're, if you're doing that two or three times, that adds up. So I don't want to base my rotation around if a power is going to crit or relying on a power to crit. I don't like doing that because you have some major inconsistencies in terms of damage. But Pebble Blast certainly does well on single target damage. It's just that uh, it's one of those things where if it doesn't crit, then you really uh, have you know, an unlucky time in terms of damage. So really in terms of that damage, in terms of my loadout here, you could run a shield. I mean, you could run Totem if you wanted for like a crappy dot or, unless if there's like a brick tank. Um, or you just leave a blank. I wouldn't run a, like, I've seen, um, you can technically run a second supercharge, but why would you? Because then you're just taking damage away from a tomb, and tomb is the top supercharge for Earth, like, bar none, in terms of dam damage on single target and melee. So, there's cases where in the event it might, like, technically in tomb is delayed damage, so that's why it may be, like, older content it's not going to be viable, but at the same time, if you're running older content, where Entomb is going to not hit on time because it's delayed damage. You're not going to get the full damage out of your Knee of Venom in that case for sure. So um, Knee of Venom, I'm sure, is practical in certain single target rotations, but I would much rather have Entomb critting for like 600, 700k on a boss than running Knee of Venom. Like 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I'd much rather take the crit of Entomb over Knee of Venom boost.
So that basically just brings us to my Pebble Blast power, just as like a sub power. But really, you could use anything you want in, in this or loadout with that. You could run shield. I know some people like survivability, so you could take that. You could take unstoppable in case you get close for some super generation. Your choice. So let's get into the rotation here. Okay, that kind of gives you an idea there. Really, you're just rotating those three powers. So I will show... Yeah, we started over there, I think, didn't we? No. Okay. 46, 52, 50, 44, 50, 44, 48, 49, 37. That was a 17.8%, uh, 45, 50. So it's going to hover around 50s. Um, it, it's going to drop below just with the crits, basically. So if upheaval doesn't crit, you drop down to like a 29.8, 26.7, 29, 29. So basically, with a less than 30% crit chance, um, that was nice there with the 25. So with less than 30% crit chance, you're probably not going to be in the 50s. If you're over 30% crit chance, you're going to be in the 50s. Which, I mean, for Earth, is not single target. It's not that bad. Uh, where Earth, single tar Earth isn't known for single target. So with upheaval, basically, what you have to remember is that upheaval, uh, tap melee times three. I'm not actually doing that. So tap me, that'd be upheaval, upheaval, and upheaval again. That's too long. So basically what I'm doing is just upheaval, the second time clipping it with heat vision, and second time clipping it with uh, sandblast, going back into it. So I'm not doing the third of Hebel. I'm just basically just doing the first two and just rotating between Heat Vision and rotating between Sandblast. So as you can see, cooldown wise, I have no room for a fourth power. It'd just be a damage loss if I tried to like tap in Pebble Blast or anything like that. Um, and then I've got the passive damage from Grim and Robot Psychic. But uh, there you go, uh, Earth single target. Uh, I tried different variations with like. Uh, using Crystal and Fortify Golem. I tried using uh, the Pebble Blast rotation. So there are rotations that are similar to this, but uh, this is the one that I certainly found more consistent. Okay, so looking at Earth ranged, uh, yes, I'm using Heat Vision. Yes, Heat Vision should be fixed because it's completely broken on ranged but I mean at the same time if you want the best rotations as of now then yes I'll be using heat vision on ranged 
Hopefully that changes in the future. It's just that's something we have to deal with at the time. So heat vision is just too powerful not to use in terms of the non-splitting damage on, on the, uh, the explosion proc. So for now we got to put up with it. So we are using Rumble Crush to set up our PI and also the proc strategist card. Like I said before, a Rumble Crush officer offers initial burst damage, and then you get a few ticks of dot damage. Striking stones, upheaval, and then robot sidekick. So basically, you're just using, you know, one, two, three, four, and upheaval back into heat vision. So that's all it is for range damage. In terms of your spec, you stay the exact same artifact wise. Running transformation strategist card because we're gonna have heat vision dots, Rumble Crush dots, uh, the multiple hits from upheaval. Uh, we're going to we're using strategic card for that for AOE, especially for ranged AOE, and then solar amplifier, which we require for heat vision. So let's get into the rotation here. Okay, so you guys get the idea there. You're pretty much at a million. You're going to have parses where you dip. That's only because the strategist card wasn't proccing that often. So 75, obviously there's no strategist procs. There's no dot ticks or anything like that. So the first parses are going to be lower. Then you're back up to pretty much a million, million two, million, 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 95, 1.1. And then the two outlier parses were basically you know, 2 or 13 hits compared to 252. <laughs> or 225, 213. So you're missing so many hits of, of the strategy card procs, just unlucky. If it was a 30 second parse, that would average out. So 1.2, 87, and 1.5, that's still averaging out to pretty much a mil in terms of a 30 second parse. So it yeah, just because I'm using 10 second parses, you get to see the, see the crit bias and see the strategy card bias. Where if you're parsing over 30 seconds, you're not going to see that as much. The same thing. So, you know, million, million, 84 is still going to average out to around, you know, high 90s, 99, 1.2, and 87. That's still million. So it just, um, you can see a little bit more discrepancy in the 10 second parse versus 30 second parsing with that. But you're still sitting around a million for Earth Ranged. And there's not even that too many rotate, or, or sorry, too many times you're going to be using Earth Ranged. Uh, Earth Single Target, you have Heat Vision and Upheaval being AoE and the Robot Psychic. Um, you also have uh, a melee damage for Earth. So it's the same time. You're not using range rotation much unless you want to be really playing it safe. But uh, and if you want to do it, you're still sitting at a million, which is about par for the course. Okay, welcome to the precision side of the guide, and we're joined on the test server. So with precision, the spec has stayed the exact same, even though uh, weapons like dual flurry shot and doomsmith have changed. Uh, the spec still stays the exact same. So we're looking at weapons expert, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, maxing everything into precision. 
iconic powers. Uh, you don't necessarily need robot psychic. That was just me uh, trying the differences between crystal and robot psychic. So you could save a skill point there. Uh, Neo Venom boost would be perfectly fine. Uh, super speed. I, I don't show the rotations with super speed in these in-depth guides because uh, these are more of like a general for everyone. So if you want to take super speed and kind of cheese it with vortex trap and, and whirling dervish for the melee and um, even the single target rotations, you can. Um, it's just use that to clip instead, but or the, use phase dodge on, on single target. But those are your prerogatives. But if you are, then you need to obviously spec that in the super speed tree. Uh, for weapons, this is where it gets a bit tricky now. Uh, there's not really like a one size fits all weapon. So I'm going to show you a variant with one handed. So then you'd take with the one handed tree down to flurry. Um, I'm going to show you a variant with brawling. So brawling, you're doing uh, brawling haymaker. Uh, so you need to take the brawling tree. Uh, the range one will be brawling truken storm. Uh, and then obviously you still need dual wheels for single targets. So you're, you're specking dual wield. And then taking that for flurry shot and, ex and and or explosive shot. So really, it kind of, um, in this guide, you'll see three different weapons. You use brawling, one-handed, and dual wield. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to take all three. I just gave like a variant. Uh, you certainly don't need one-handed. You could do prime with brawling and dual wield. But these are the options that I present, at least in this guide. So augments are going to be what you expect. Uh, adaptive augments are going to be precise. Origin augments are going to be precise as well. And in terms of gear, whatever weapon you're using is always going to have blast adapter regardless. Uh, head mod's going to be supercharged Neo Venom boost, at least for Earth. Neck mod's always going to be relentless precision. Uh, back mod, I went up with on accelerate and stoppable. You could do accelerate gemstone shield. I know uh, that's another popular clip with, on the single target, but I like unstoppable at least for the uh, the melee variant. Chest mod, penetrating strikes. Uh, I mean, you could technically use extended supercharge here if you wanted because you aren't running traps of soul cloak. But with uh, using unstoppable, at least in the melee loadout uh, or other loadout variations, you can earn supercharge fairly quickly. Uh, and then Neo Venom still has a 45 second cooldown, so you may overlap a bit. Leg mod, nothing scales. Uh, trinkets, nothing really matters. Dark Construct Bat, that's uh, one of the most easily accessible high damage trinkets. Orbital Supply, DPS trinket. Hand mod's going to be max damage. Uh, foot mod's going to be uh, tumbling master, deadly block. It's really your choice. Uh, there's no specific choice for prec that's going to be favored. Uh, artifacts. Normally, I would say you could run Venomous Dispenser or Gnorm, depending on what you have leveled. But with Earth, you need the Crush PI, not only for Crystal, but for your powers as well. So uh, it is much more imperative that you have uh, the Vernum Artifact for Earth. So you should really have this anyway because this kind of ekes out Venomrist. Um, not like a night and day difference, but uh, the meta for Prec has kind of shifted to these three artifacts. So you're going to have Transformation Stratus anyway, but uh, Earth is going to shine much better uh, with this artifact because of the PI setup for Crush. So let's get into the loadout here. Okay, so with Earth, basically there's two, there's going to be more than two options, but the two options that I'm going to present to you are going to be Brawling and One-Handed. Uh, so with the Brawling loadout, you're going to be running uh, Fortified Golem, which is basically giving power and the 15% increase in damage to Crystal. Uh, Reinforce will be your Weapon Buff Clip, Unstoppable will be your Supercharge Generator, and the Triple Clip there. Uh, localized Tremor is just um, uh, your... Basically, your might move. It hit. It does hit harder than tectonic break. Tectonic break earns supercharge a little bit better, but uh, for all intents and purposes, the prec local charm will be fine. And then you you summon it up with summon crystal golem and Neo Venom boost. So the loadout revolves around using brawling haymaker. So if we go back to the spec here, you're using brawling haymaker, which is the the three tap two hold. Uh, it is very awkward to parse, <laughs> especially with the OP head and the stupid dom cap of 1500. So uh, I'm a thousand over the dom cap regardless without even starting. So uh, if you if you have the OP head or even like the OP legs, you'll find it very, very frustrating to parse this because even even boxing in the sparring targets doesn't really help uh, because of how dumb Haymaker is in terms of the knockup. So it, um, 
it's going to be deceptive in the parsing, but uh, it does. Uh, it is a nice melee combo now. Now that we don't have Doomspin. So the second variant, I believe it's on this armory, is going to be one-handed flurry. It's the only the spec stays the exact same. The only thing that changes is now your, your weapon is going to be one-handed. So you're taking it down and just using flurry, which is basically the three-tap hold. Uh, and then the important thing with this rotation is that um, with it being a regular uh, combo, you can actually clip it. So that's why we're taking Tectonic Break and Localized Tremor. So you don't really have um, fast clipping or multiple clipping moves in this rotation uh, because you want to make sure you always have a power off cooldown to be able to clip Flurry. Uh, so you'll see that in the rotation. It's just that um, it may look a little bit dumb uh, taking these extra powers, but you need to be able to uh, be able to clip Flurry uh, for that damage. Uh, Brawling Haymaker is a little bit more AoE. Flurry is much more of a focused cone. So uh, you have to be mindful of your positioning. It's not like Doomspin where you can just jump in. But like Brawling Haymaker and uh, the, the reason why uh, Doomspin saw that nerf is that Doomspin you could just jump into a pile of ads. It didn't matter. And you just start your combo. It's 360 degree AOE damage. So you could just jump in do the, do the combo and not have to worry about anything. Where now with like Brawling Haymaker, with like uh, like Rifle Flurry, if you're using that Weapon Mastery, uh, Flurry in general, uh, you have to be much more aware of your positioning. So you have to make sure that you're uh, hitting as many ads as you can because it's going to hit in front of you. It's not going to hit behind you. So if there's a bunch of ads behind you, it's useless. You're not going to hit that because you're only going to hit what's in front of you. So other than that, you're still using Clipping with Fortify Golem to get crystal damage. And then you've got an event and Booster around that out. So... Let's get in and show you these rotations. Okay, so you get the idea there. Uh, probably one of the most awkward rotations to parse ever. And before people say, well, you can take off the OP head. Uh, if I do that, I'm still at 1900 on. Why? Because I'm a tank on test. So I got the generator mods and the 4% from Strategist. So I'm literally screwed either way. Uh, so incredibly, incredibly annoying. That's not going to happen to you in game. That's not going to happen in raids because obviously you're going to be on the Dom camp. So I'm not going to move. You saw like the like the 100k crits on on Haymaker, so it, the potential is there. It's just that getting the right parsing. So um, even crappy parses where I'm not even hitting all the targets properly, I'm still getting in the 80s to 90s because you saw even I'm always missing one target. So the, the potential is certainly there for Brawling Haymaker. It's just something that is really awkward for you to parse yourself on the sparring targets because of the, the dominance. So if you're if you're somehow under watching this video and under 1500 dom then you're fine. Uh, then you, those targets won't move, and then you can parse properly and find out what this rotation will, will do. But uh, until then, it's just kind of that awkwardness. Uh, but it, it's certainly viable, it's just not necessarily viable to parse with.
Right, so another viable uh, precision combo as well. You're going to have a little bit of fluctuation, uh, but this one is... The one-handed flurry is much better at procking um, strategy card because of all of the multiple crits. So this is where you're going to have much more damage with the strategy card versus like the uh, brawling haymaker. So brawling haymaker relies on those big hits, and now with flurries like you know constant hits, 25k, 25k, 120 hits, but uh, you're still getting easily a million damage, million, million, ninety. Uh, so it's because of those strategy card procs. So the more procs you have, obviously the higher parsing you have. But uh, one-handed flurry is also a very uh, viable alternative to brawling if you don't want to use brawling and you already have one-handed. So basically those are the two uh, viable rotations brawling one-handed to be able to use. Uh, the only downside to one-handed is that there's no really range to one-handed where brawling you've got true Storm, which I'll show later. Uh, dual explosive shot you still have for explosive shot and flurry shot. One-handed is kind of like just that standalone one just for melee. Okay, so for Earth uh, Precision Single Target, Spec stays the exact same as normal. Uh, the only thing now is our weapon is going to be dual wield. So even though dual wield uh, flurry shot saw some adjustments in terms of uh, how you clip it, uh, it's still the most viable one for single target damage that's not melee. Uh, so you're going to spec down to this tree, the dual tree, and as well as a bow tree. And then I always take uh, explosive shot. It's, it's only literally only one extra skill point to take explosive shot just mastery, just in case there's a boss with adds, and you need to um, uh, be able to get some AOE damage as well. So definitely take both skill points, just so you've got uh, some flexibility in your rotation. In terms of loadout, we're going to be doing fortify golem, clip with uh, reinforce the weapon buff, clip with unstoppable. Uh, technically, if you want to be super speed, you can clip with phase dodge. That option uh, is, is presented as well. I do unstoppable just because I'm not going to show the move mode variant. And as well, if you can sneak up to melee range, you can get a little bit extra supercharge, uh, depending on the boss fight, uh, and a little bit AOE damage as well. The range on unstoppable is quite small, but I mean it's still there just in case you can sneak in some clips. Same concept of like uh, clipping a uh, flare shot with uh, Whirling Dervish. If you can pull that off, you can pull unstoppable off. <clears throat> and we've got uh, gemstone shield as well, which is another clip, just in case that's off cooldown. So let's get into the rotation here. Alright, so you get the idea there. So 43, 46, 41, 44, 51, 58, 
uh, 45, 37 I think I clipped way too early a few times. Uh, that was only 38 hits compared to mid 40s, so I definitely, definitely had some two or three shot ones. Uh, back up to 52 right after 48. So do a flare shot, still perfectly fine. Uh, I'm by no means a flare shot master. So in terms of something that's actually well practiced on flare shot, you'll be able to see the increase in those numbers. The important thing is that you have Grim to set up the crush PI for crystal. Uh, and then technically you can put in phase dodge there. You don't have to use unstoppable. I'll just use that because it's going to come off cooldown the exact same time as fortify golem. And then if I was melee range, uh, I'd be doing even more damage because I'd have the damage from unstoppable plus the melee damage from sidekick. So uh, if you're in a boss fight where you can get close, you'd be doing a lot more damage just with that unstoppable hit. And then gemstone shield didn't use, but you can still clip with that or just have the shield in general. But uh, phase dodge works just as well. It's just I like the uh, the timing there, just because I'm not moving using the movement powers. But uh, there you go. That's going to be the single target rotation. Okay, so that brings us to the precision range section. Uh, this one I'm going to offer you two different loadouts depending on what kind of weapon you spec because if, if you take uh, one hand of flurry for the melee rotation you're most likely not going to pick up brawling so then you'd be using dual explosive shot because you have to have dual for a single target but if you did pick up brawling for melee uh, I'm going to show you the brawling shuriken storm for ranged uh, so the spec stays the exact same just going to be dependent on which weapon you have so for example this is going to be the brawling one first you need to spec the entire brawling tree and then the entire martial arts tree. And then basically take uh, Brawling and Shuriken Storm Mastery. And in terms of a loadout, uh, this one, because of the fast uh, nature of the combo, you do need a couple extra power, so you lose a clipping power. So you got Fortify, Clip with Reinforce, and then Striking Stones. Upheaval you're only using once, uh, just basically just for cooldowns. And then uh, Crystal and the Venom Boost. And then the only change would uh, would do would be um, kind of quickly show you here. Uh, uh, dual wield, you're going to take the entire dual tree and take explosive shot mastery, and then you're going to be taking the entire bow tree. And in terms of uh, this loadout, uh, it does change slightly because of the longer nature. So you don't um, you can drop. You're going to need to take upheaval. And then you can have gemstone shield as a clipping if you want. Um, actually, not upheaval, striking stones. Because you can't clip upheaval. So the upheaval has a slightly higher base damage uh, than striking stones, but you can't clip it. So this way, at least you'd be able to clip it with uh, gemstone shield and, and be a little bit faster because striking stones has the, the longer animation. So you don't need, because of the longer nature of the explosive shot combo, you don't need to take two powers like I had with upheaval and striking stones. You can just do it with one. And then basically striking stones clipped and then reversing back to fortify golem and then basically you're just alternating between those two and then the important part obviously is you have the grim because the grim will set up the crush pi so let's get into those rotations here and show you what they look like
Okay, so you get the idea there. You're going to have some fluctuations in the parsing. Uh, obviously, it is perfectly capable of hitting the melees. Uh, so 80, pretty much a mil, uh, mil, mil, and then we drop down. It's all going to be dependent on the hits, obviously, with the strategy card procs, with how many hits you're getting on um, the Shuriken Storm. So we got like 253, 223, 251 down to like 199, 210, 200. Uh, so obviously, with the less strategy procs uh, you have, you're going to be a little bit less damage. But uh, it's still still perfectly viable, still max range. Uh, you're just going to have, obviously, some fluctuations because you're depending on those strategy card procs, uh, more so than others. Right, same thing, you have some fluctuations. Dual Explosive Shot doesn't really work the best with Strategy Car procs, because you're not going to get that many procs. Uh, what did I start with? Uh, 86, 85. Uh, don't, did I start with a 28? No, it can't be. Must have started back from that rotation. Yep, yeah. so 85, 65, 88, 70, 74, 74, 96, 78, and then obviously ended with the 32. Uh, 44 hits so you just have so many less hits less chances for the strategy card to proc um, It's just not as viable as brawling shrieking storm It's one of those things where you take uh, dual explosive shot because it's an option because you already have one-handed So if you don't want to go out and spend you know an extra hundred or no sorry extra what 95 marks on a weapon or an extra 90 marks on a weapon You already have dual because of, of a single target so you might as well use explosive shot if you have but uh, it's going to be certainly less damage than brawling. So if you want to use the brawling for melee, then you have that uh, range option as well. But I mean, really, prec in general, you're not going to be using much range damage with prec. Uh, prec is going to be melee focused or single target focused. Uh, there's not too many times where you're just sitting back and doing that. Um, sometimes in boss fights with that, with explosive shot. But really, there's no rage. There's no raid that you have to really focus on precision ranged for. <laughs> it's either going to be melee or single target. Okay, so now we're on to the tanking side of the guide. Uh, now, before I get started, this is the Terrestrial Chroma Power Set material, and the, which is the Earth one. I really thought it would have been closer to Earth. Like, it looks more like fire. Unless they were going for like a whole center of the Earth kind of core material. I don't know. I would figure it at least it would have been brown, and not this kind of like lava looking. But maybe that's just me. So with Earth tanking, the only thing that's changed in the past year or plus with Earth, uh, game update 103, Batuba slightly changed how uh, Brick works with Fortify Golem. So Fortify Golem now applies a heal over time to Brick. Uh, Fortify Golem is a bit more reliable in terms of it did not always shield before, didn't give Brick his full power bar. It, it was it, it could glitch out. Um, and then also he increased the healing that Totem does for Brick. Not that 
Totem can be used. It's a little bit annoying because it's 30 second cooldown. Uh, it doesn't follow you around. It's locked in position. So it's kind of useless on ad fights. It does have a big range. But it is more viable. It's just that it's not it's not very practical still. If you want to go for like a pure brick never dies loadout, then sure that you'd have run totem. But uh, I find much more use out of uh, running a different ability. So in terms of the spec, we can kind of jump back into that here. So at least with with brick tanking, it's always going to be hybrid, and with aftershocks, it's always going to be super powered. Uh, brick tanking with hybrid, you're not slowly using superpowers, you're just using fortify golem every six seconds, but everything else, you've got time to do weapon attacks, there's plenty of weapons that do like knockdowns and, and juggles uh, that you can do with our weapon combos for damage. But for, uh, for aftershocks, you do need superpower, jackhammer spam, it can get kind of uh, power heavy, you don't want to stress the healer, uh, stress the power, just stress the controllers too much, let me collect myself and my thoughts. Um, especially with, with, uh, Claw Trollers being so common nowadays for the buffs because DPS don't use too much power because they're might based or prec based and might based is using like finishers and heat vision so they're not using much power. So the, the controllers are using more claw builds or buff builds so you do want to be mindful that as a tank you don't want to run out of power so that's why I would still put, do super powered for uh, aftershocks only. You're taking just the criticals to get down. Uh, criticals aren't important for earth at all. This is going to be your soda. You're not going to run a self healing move as earth. And then you're specking all your dominance, and then the rest into health. Iconic powers is going to be mesmerizing lasso, hard light shield, super speed. You don't need to take the moving innates to get the power back. You can. Uh, I do it because I've got the extra skill sp points to spare, but it's not required. Uh, you will need dash attack and phase dodge. Uh, if you're at acrobats, you would take uh, perfect poise. If you're flight and skimming. I mean, you know, God help you, <laughs> but you just you would take a, you would take nothing if you're fighting the skimming because there's nothing viable for, in that tree for tanking. And in terms of weapons, once again, weapon choice you're looking mainly for something that's kind of a fast lunge and a fast block breaker. So like bow has a terrible lunge but a good block breaker. Shield's good. Um, obviously, rifle's got a fast lunge and block breaker, but obviously you've got no lunge. Uh, I mean, fast lunge, I meant like just actual lunging and interrupting, not actually covering distance. So I, I always fall suit to one-handed. Plenty of tanks use shield as well. Martial arts is viable as well. So it, that's basically the two things you look for in a weapon. Staff has good AOE juggles, knockups. So in terms of the gear, you're always going to have absorption adapter. The head mod's going to be whatever supercharger you're running. The neck mod's going to be fortified assault always. Back mod's going to be gemstone shield accelerated. Chest mod's going to be hardy. Leg mod, nothing scales, so don't worry about it. Uh, in terms of utility belt, uh, I always run quantic emitters just for stuns. And you can run the tank trinket if you want, or you can run spy drop. It's your really your choice. Uh, breakout trinket, I always keep in handy because breakout trinket will also clip your summon a brick. And then an orbital strike. Max damage in the hands. Uh, feet, you could go tumbling master, deadly block, doesn't really matter. I would tend to not do explosive block because it can get a bit annoying sometimes, especially as a tank. Artifacts with Earth, you do have some choices. Manacles is going to be 100%. Uh, you definitely want that uh, reset of uh, Gemstone Shield. Gemstone Shield is the strongest tank shield in the game. That's base. Uh, Mystic Symbol of the Seven is also really important. You don't need this at 200, though. This is perfectly fine at 160. The third artifact choice is where you got some options. Everyman Prototype is nice, but it's not entirely suited for earth because earth your health is going to remain fairly high if you're aftershocks or brick because your defense is so high uh, already uh, earth has the, the largest base defense out of any tank so every man is helpful especially say like brick dies and you're waiting to resummon it yes every man is going to come in handy in those situations but it's not required um, I lot know a lot of tanks run supercharges, so then you want Eye of the Gemini, if you had Silver Refractor still. So basically, the, the third artifact with tanks, you do have some options with Earth Tank. There's no really set, like, you have to run these threes Earth. If you want to supercharge, by all means, run Gemini then. If you already have every man leveled from a different uh, tank build, use that, that's fine. So going into the differences here. So with tanking, uh, or tanking in particular, you've basically got three different, uh, sorry, two different uh, play styles. So you've got Summer Brick Golem. Brick Golem is going to give you Earth and Bond. So essentially what that means is you're going to be getting a damage transfer uh, to Brick uh, that you take, which I'll show uh, in the example section. 
but uh, that's essentially what that does. You want to keep healing Brick with Earth or um, Fortify Golem to shield him, to get him power so he can see taunts. Uh, and then basically you have survived by damage transferring to Brick. Or there's the Aftershocks build. Uh, we'll go to Upheaval. So Aftershocks give you Stone Skin, which is increasing your defense by 55% while not blocking. On top of the defense you'd already get as tanking, which is uh, 65%. So you just have to maintain Aftershocks the entire time. So it's not like you have to sit and spam it the entire time. You just have to make sure that once you have Stone Skin active, you're keeping it active. Uh, most commonly, it's used with Jackhammer. Once we get down here, Jackhammer. Upheaval is basically the range, but Upheaval is uh, interruptible, which not necessarily that's, that'd be not be very viable, but essentially it's Jackhammer. So let's get into an actual loadout and show you some examples. So in terms of a loadout for Earth, we're going to have Earth and Grope, which is our range pull. Sets up Crush, but Crush doesn't apply for really Earth tanking at all. we got Epicenter. Epicenter is going to be your sub-up power. You don't necessarily have to use this to gather adds. Uh, I use it just for uh, AoE and convenience, but you can certainly sub this out and run like a supercharge or another power if you'd like. Uh, unstoppable if you want another juggle. Fortify Golem is going to be your bread and bother. You want to hit this off cooldown just because it uh, not only provides a heal over time for Brick now, but it provides him full power back. Uh, and with with Golem, he can be with Brick can be a little bit annoying sometimes where if he uses Jackhammer to acquire aggro, it drains his entire power bar and then he can't heal efficiently. So that's why you want to hit it off cooldown almost regardless. Gemstone Shield is obviously going to be your, your stronger shield uh, that you have to set up. Uh, basically tap melee each time you gain a stack of Gemstone Shield. So you want to make sure you're, you're at least maxing out your stacks. Hard Light Shield and summary brick goal. And what I mean by stacks is, so if I do one, two, and we'll wait for this to cool down to reset. So basically each stack of it, of uh, gemstone shield, you're gaining a little bit more absorption to the high, with the highest absorption tier. So say if we go max, now we've got four, instead of one, instead of two, so it's why you may want to make sure you maintain those gemstone stacks. This would be what be three then, yeah. So each tier gets a little bit weaker. So we can kind of get showing some examples here. Jump in on the shadow golem. And essentially, you're letting break do the work. You, be, you can take a look to my left. You'll see the damage transfer log and the damage that is being transferred to Brick. And this is why you can kind of see that um, Everyman Prototype is not always going to be the best artifact to use for Earth because I'm going to keep high health because of my defense and because of the damage transferring taking place. Like I'm being hit by all those attacks and really not much damage is transferred that I took to myself. Because it's mostly Earth and all the work. And you can see just uh, Brick Golem hit uh, Jackhammer. He's got no power. If you look in the Brick's health bar in the top left, now he's got full. So that's all it is. So similar with Rage, and you have to worry about Rage Crash, you just have to make sure you're always hitting Fortified Golem off cooldown. Because when you don't have power, it'll taunt for you. Uh, Brick's going to also have his healing as well. So... Eventually the Shadow Golem will summer adds. Uh, I don't have enough DPS to push him to his ad phase. And now I'm kind of running out of power myself. That's essentially it. Um, it. It really comes down to your play style. You don't have to run Epicenter. I do it because I like to you know, pull things in, then group them up, and I have them all right there. But it's not required. The only thing required for a brick build is to be able to hit Fortify Golem. Totem can also help with the healing on bosses. But the way I find it is if if you're doing a boss fight, like say you're doing like a Demi last boss 
or Phoenix Cannon Elite first boss, Brick is going to die pretty much regardless. If you're in a situation where Brick is going to die, then he's going to die regardless, and you're going to have to worry about summoning him, which is why, like, say, for example, if Brick died, let me just kill Brick here. If Brick died, oh no, Brick's out. I can clip my trinket, my breakout trinket, and now Brick's summoned instantly. You can also do that with a shield. I can clip summon Brick with hard light shield. I can clip summon Brick with a uh, gemstone shield. Ran out of power for the stack there. But uh, that's that's essentially how you want to play it. Uh, Brick is the more active tanking, which is why you can go for counters a lot easier. Where Aftershocks, you'd be sitting in Jackhammer the entire time or, or uh, applying Jackhammer stacks or worrying about that. Where with Brick tanking, you have much more freedom, you have much more mobility to go for counters, stuff like that. Go for dodges, lunge adds, stuff like that. So that's essentially what uh, Brick comes into. Let's uh, take a look at Aftershocks. Okay, so with an Aftershocks build, not too much changes. Like I said before, you would pick, uh, spec Super Powered. Uh, that's going to be more important for Aftershocks. Uh, if you can afford the skill points to get the Power Innate returns, I would take that for Aftershocks as well, just because you want to maintain your own personal power as much as you can. And in terms of a loadout, you're still going to have Earth and Grip. Um, this is going to be where you sub it out. You, you can still run Epicenter if you want, certainly can. Uh, I like Unstoppable because I'm running a supercharge in this build. Unstoppable is also the supercharge generator. It also sets up Crush. You get a tiny little bit more damage with Jackhammer. Also, same thing. I mean, Earth and Grip would set up Crush too. So, I mean, it's not, you don't take that power just because it does that. Uh, it also is a great knock up ability as well. So, you basically knock them up and then keep them knocked down with Jackhammer. And then you're taking Gemstone Shield, Hard Light Shield, and Dash Attack to round that out just for the extra survivability. So you can certainly take Epicenter or whatever ability you like. Uh, I just personally like Unstoppable in that build, but really it's going to be uh, your personal preference. So with Jackhammer, basically, you're just looking to maintain those stacks. So once you basically get Stone Skin active, then you're ready to jump in. Think of it kind of like the Atomic Ore as well. So once you've got Stone Skin active, then basically you'll know that's up. So tank roll, basically 55% defense. You have that active. And then once it starts to disappear, then you know you have to reapply it. So you don't have to spam jackhammer. I don't know some earth tanks do. Uh, that's not necessary. Basically, as long as you're hitting it, get a jackhammer up, you can move around, you can move around and counter, whatever you need to do. And then reapply it every, like every like four or five seconds depending on usually that's why I base the cooldown off of unstoppable just you know when to reply it so you're using jackhammer like at least every six seconds so we can kind of jump in here we got stone skin active so you'll see the difference with brick is where I have to spend a lot more time in jackhammer so say if I do a block or get that counter I can't necessarily always do that because I'm going to be in jackhammer So that's what you have to essentially watch out for, is that sometimes you're not going to be able to counter or you're not going to be able to get Aftershocks up because you're going to be have to. You can't jackhammer. You, you say, say like Lighty Blackhawk's charging you in, in Phoenix Cannon or, you know, Zeus is doing, some, uh, like Grail's doing like a Bracers Reflect. Obviously, you, if you get too close to use jackhammer on Bracers, you're going to die. But at the same time, you have to apply Aftershocks because you, you can't drop your Stone Skin. If you drop your Stone Skin, you know, your half your defense is gone. So it's that's why I personally feel like Brick uh, is a little bit more viable in terms of viability, especially after GU38. But I mean, don't get the impression that you can't do something as Brick or you can't do it after aftershocks. Everything you can do as Brick tank, you can do as aftershocks. Is just how much easier it is or how much um, flexibility you have. Like 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 I said before, that's all it is. So. I uh, know we're going to see if Calculator Bot pushes it to the add phase. Not sure we're going to do enough damage for it. But I'm maintaining my supercharge. In terms of after Aftershocks, the same thing. Everyman doesn't help as much, especially with the, the amount of defense I have. My health is not really dropping that much. Yeah, I've got some heals from the outside, but I don't have a healer in my group. It's just basically the... Uh, the, um, in, the um, sorry, the... NPC heals from that, from Solace. That's all Aftershock is going to be. 
like I said, ads come out. You can use Epicenter. You don't have to. You can just Earth and Grip. Earth and Grip used to be a single pull. Now it's multi pull. You just have to be directional with it. Uh, Earth and Grip can be a little bit annoying sometimes as well because you're going to have situations where it stuns the ads and then pulls them. So here we go. So we got the bots up now. We can kind of pull them. As you can see there, I get stunned out of Jackhammer as well, which can happen. And then I'm caged. But, as you see, Unstoppable just knocked them all up. Once again, I get knocked out of Jackhammer. So it will happen, depending on what the boss is doing. That's, that, that's the issue, is that you have to maintain your aftershocks, but you're, you're constantly getting interrupted. Where with Brick, you wouldn't have to worry about that. You, know, you, just, you just hit Fortify, and then you're fine. So that's why it's the ease of use with the brick is so much nicer because you just hit basically hit fortify as long as brick is alive then basically you're you have a good chance that you're gonna be alive where with here especially with calculated by you're seeing this I, there's so many times you're getting interrupted CC pulled you know pushed a, a way out of my aftershocks that I may not be able to sustain it but that's that's essentially where it comes or I get like boxed like this my aftershocks could technically drop. But you can see, my this entire time being attacked, my health is like barely budging. So the defense is very strong on Earth. It's, I don't want to give that impression that it's that's not. But it's it's basically just the ease of use with aftershocks versus brick. That's all it is. So that kind of gives you a quick impression of what aftershocks can be like in terms of a loadout and rotation.